Hey folks, what's up? This is Michael, of course, in the wee hours of the night on the Graveyard Shift. Oh my goodness, coming to you once again with a brand new trivia question. I hope everyone is doing well. I appreciate every one of you on the work that you do, I really do. Time to get over that hump. Happy hump day. Let's get over that hump and move right along with the rest of the week. And without further ado, the answer to the previous trivia question was, of course, the epic, iconic film, classic, Gone with the Wind. Now, when November of 1976 rolled in, Gone with the Wind was nothing new, of course. We've, we've all heard of Gone with the Wind, and we know it's been around since the, ni- the late 1930s. And even then, it had become, in, in 76, by the late 70s, it, it was still a part of American movie culture, right? It was, it's a classic film in fact believe it or not hbo and i did not know this this surfaced in my research hbo had showed the epic film earlier in 1976 right prior to what was the focus of this trivia question not a whole lot of people the the key takeaway there is that not a whole bunch of people had cable back in 1976 I know I didn't. That was one of the first people. We were one of the first people to get cable on our block, but we didn't have it in 1976. That's for sure. Anywho, on October 7th of 1976, which was the focus of the trivia question, Gone with the Wind would make its broadcast television debut on NBC. The film, based on the novel by Margaret Mitchell, of course, aired in two parts, with the second part broadcasting the following evening. The the broadcast in all, in and of itself, overall, on those two nights, Gone with the Wind earned a then-record household rating of 47.7 million and a 65 share of TV viewers. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with like shares, okay, and 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 the the number of uh, people who viewed it, 47.7 and 65 share is incredible ratings for for late 1970s. Okay, so its second night numbers were just as high. It was like 47, 64, respectively. So it really went over well is the main takeaway there. The two-part presentation still holds the 8th and ninth positions, respectively, on the list of top 10 highest-rated primetime programs of all time. So once again, even in the late 1970s, folks still loved Gone with the Wind. It became the highest-rated television program ever presented on a single network. Okay, for 19, uh, up until that time, up until 1976. All right, so NBC, check this out, paid $5 million for a one-off airing. Now, of course, $5 million is nothing in today's, today's day and age, right? But it, that was quite a, quite a pretty penny back in 1976. They paid $5 million for the one-off airing, and this would set off a trend of sorts for Gone with the Wind in particular. After this 1976 viewing on NBC, right? So it was. This is an interesting part of the trivia. Two years later, in 1978, CBS signed a deal worth 35 million dollars to for the ownership of to Gone, Gone with the Wind to broadcast the film 20 times over, uh, you know, over a certain amount of time, right? Turner Entertainment would acquire MGN Film Library in 1986. This was pretty interesting. You guys don't even know who Turner Turner Entertainment is, you kids out there. But anywho, they they had to uh, buy Gone with the Wind separately from CBS because of the previous 1978 rights purchase of the film. Right. So my 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 point is there's a, there's a ton of money being exchanged over Gone with the Wind in the late seventies. Right. A deal was struck in which the rights were returned to Turner Entertainment. The rights to Gone with the Wind. I couldn't find what that deal was, but I I imagine it was a pretty penny. Right. And I'll, I'll wrap all this up into a single point later on. Now CBS's broadcast rights to The Wizard of Oz were extended. Uh, as well, so they they actually own the rights to the Wizard of Oz as well back in the late seventies. I thought that was an interesting little geek factoid that surfaced. Once obtained legally by Turner, the the film Gone with the Wind was used to launch two cable channels owned simultaneously by Turner Broadcasting System. This was of course TNT and Turner Classic Movies. Again, you kids don't you don't even know what these these movies are. So I think Turner Classics might be still around. I don't think TNT. I think TNT's was either bought or is, a, is another channel in its entirety. And suddenly, everyone wanted to see Gone with the Wind because of this 1976 
NBC television broadcast. Now, I believe Turner Network still owns the rights to the movie, actually, if I'm not mistaken. There was some research that I found where they were, uh, uh, in 2014, 2015, they were putting putting out figures of how much money the uh, the movie had made, Turner Broadcasting. So I believe they still actually own the rights to the movie. I don't think that ever changed hands since that, that purchase back in the late 1980s. The the film, Gone with the Wind, debuted on video cassettes. Again, you kids don't even know what video cassettes is. In March of 85, where it placed second in sales charts that year. So uh, my overall point over and over again is this movie continued to do really well. <laughs> like since 1939, it's 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 just a good good movie, right? Uh, and since, of course, it's been released on DVD and Blu-ray disc formats, when it was released initially in 1939, it became the highest earning film made up to that point and held the record for over a quarter of a century. I've included a picture there. I tried to include as many pictures as I can. There's way too many of Gone with the Wind. But one of them is just with a crowd of people in 1939, 1940 going to see Gone with the Wind in the movie theaters. Uh, a couple of cool geek facts. Well, here's a personal geek factoid. My father, check this out, has the record of seeing Gone with the Wind. I don't know how many hundreds of times he's seen it, but it played in a uh, movie theater in Sanford, North Carolina, where he worked at hi- in high school. <laughs> and he, used to, uh, he hates Gone with the Wind because it played just over and over and over again. And of course, he has the hometown record of seeing Gone with the Wind that many times. Anywho, when adjusted for monetary inflation, Gone with the Wind is the highest grossing film in history. I question that. I questioned that in light of E.T., of Avatar, Titanic, The Avengers, all of those that were record-breaking. And I went back and looked and verified it. Uh, And if my research serves me correctly based on what I found, that is a true statement. Gone with the Wind is still the highest-grossing film in history. It is regarded as one of the greatest films of all times. It has long since been selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was part of the inaugural um, submission for the registry. Absolutely ingrained in popular culture, Gone with the Wind is. It has been re-released throughout the 20th century over and over again. It was highly criticized for glorifying slavery and the Confederacy, which it does. But it has also been credited with triggering changes in the way in which African Americans were depicted in movies. Haiti McDonald, McDaniel, in particular, uh, I say her name again, Haiti McDaniel. Look her up. She won an Oscar for her role as Mammy, becoming the very first African American to win an Oscar ever. Good for her. It was 1940, folks. It was unheard of. And it was a very good role that she played. So if you get a chance, you can check it out. The community that I work in, I'm at, at my night job, lo and behold, has just recently shown Gone with the Wind. It's in their movie catalog. It's a great movie for all generations. You can watch it over and over again, no matter what generation you are, how old you are, where you come from. So uh, check it out. Maybe it's a good Christmas movie to uh, add to your collection. I believe it. I'm almost certain it's in the bargain bin on Amazon somewhere, and you can probably find it on 500 channels and nothing to watch at some point at somewhere. And if you can't, then frankly, darling, I don't give a damn. That's a famous line from Gone with the Wind, by the way. All right, folks, enough Gone with the Wind. Let's be gone with that trivia question altogether and move on to a brand new trivia question, getting over that hump in hump day for November 9th. Here we go. Check this out. On this day in 1965, 30 million people in eight U.S. states and the Canadian provinces of Ontario and Quebec were affected by by this, which began at the height of rush hour, delayed millions of commuters, trapped over 800,000 people in subways, and stranded 1,000 more in office buildings, elevators, and trains. Good grief. What could that have been? Good luck, folks. Thanks for all you do, and peace out. I love you guys.